this is the first time ever where I felt like we actually know what to do. Did the AI community just pass the AGI threshold and not even realize it? That's the provocative question behind a fascinating new paper titled The Surprising Effectiveness of Test Time Training for Abstract Reasoning. This groundbreaking research straight out of AI dives into one of the toughest challenges in AI today. You've probably heard of benchmarks like GSM-8K and GPQA, popular tests for AI performance. But here's something you might not know. A senior staff engineer at Google, Francis Soleil, famed for creating the Keras Deep Learning Library in 2015, designed a highly specific and daunting benchmark called the ARC AGI Progress. What Soleil says about this benchmark could change the way we think about AGI progress and wait till you see the latest research results. They might just leave you questioning everything we thought we knew about AI capabilities. Before we dive in, smash that like button, subscribe to AI Gridlock, and stay ahead of the curve with the hottest AI breakthroughs. What is the ARC benchmark and why do you even need this prize? Why won't the biggest LLM we have in a year be able to just saturate it? Sure. So ARC is intended as a kind of IQ test for machine intelligence. And what makes it different from uh, most LLM benchmarks out there is that it's designed to be resistant to memorization. So if you look at the way LLMs work, they are basically this uh, big interpolative memory. And the way you scale up their capabilities is by trying to cram as much uh, knowledge and patterns as possible into them. And uh, by contrast, uh, ARC does not require a lot of knowledge at all. It's designed to only require what's known as uh, core knowledge, which is uh, basic knowledge about things like uh, elementary physics, objectness, counting, that sort of thing. Um, the sort of knowledge that any four-year-old or five-year-old uh, possesses, right? Um, but what's interesting is that each puzzle in ARC is novel, is something that you've probably not encountered before, even if you've memorized the entire internet. And that's what, that's what makes it, <clears throat> sorry, that's what uh, makes, makes ARC challenging for LLMs. And so far, LLMs have not uh, been doing very well on it. In fact, the approaches that are working well uh, are more towards uh, discrete program search. Let me break down what Francis Cholet is getting at. The, the ARC benchmark he developed isn't your typical playground for large language models in LMs. And an unlike traditional benchmarks where LMs often shine, sometimes because they've seen the questions before, this one is in a league of its own. The ARC test requires pure reasoning and understanding. There's no way to train for it. The ability to solve it must come from within the system. For context, humans score around 85% on this test. But LMMs, they seriously struggle. Now, if you're curious about what this test looks like, it's deceptively simple. Take a look. In one example, you'll notice objects with holes that need to be filled with yellow. Every input follows a consistent logic. If there's a hole, it gets yellow. And when you reach the output, the same reasoning applies. It's straightforward for a person, but incredibly challenging for AI. This kind of test pushes the limits of what machines can actually reason about, and it's part of why this research is so groundbreaking. Here's the core challenge. LLMs struggle with tests like these because they've never encountered anything similar before. This is what's called the out-of-distribution problem. LLMs falter when faced with unfamiliar problems. If we ever hope to achieve AGI, this is a hurdle we must overcome. A truly intelligent system needs to reason through unfamiliar situations and still perform reliably across a wide range of use cases and industries. And that's where this new research from MIT becomes a game changer. The paper, The Surprising Effectiveness of Test Time Training for Abstract Reasoning, delves into a fascinating idea. While LLMs have shown impressive results within their training distribution, they tend to fall apart when confronted with novel, complex reasoning tasks. This research introduces a technique called test time training, which involves temporarily updating a model's parameters during inference based on feedback from the input data. It sounds technical, right? But here's the kicker. 
they've managed to significantly boost the model's performance, even surpassing human-level reasoning on this notoriously difficult benchmark. For the first time, LLMs have broken through a barrier they were traditionally seen as unable to overcome. It's a groundbreaking step, and one that could redefine how we measure progress toward AGI. Here's a quick breakdown of what the researchers actually did. They developed a clever approach for testing and refining model predictions in real time, using what's called test time data transformations. Don't worry, I won't bog you down with too many details, but here's the gist. The method involves flipping the model's perspective. Literally, they transformed the data in various ways, such as flipping it vertically, horizontally, or even leaving parts out. Think of it like this. If you're predicting the next number in a sequence, like 2, 4, 6, the obvious answer is 8. But the researchers went deeper. They reversed the process, looking at predictions for 4 and 6 to figure out what might come before 2, then they analyzed the relationship between 2 and 6 to predict what could fit in between or beyond. By applying different transformations to the problem, they explored all the possible solutions systematically. Here's where it gets really clever. After generating multiple predictions from these transformed perspectives, the model uses a hierarchical voting system. First, it consolidates predictions from individual transformations, intra-transformation voting, then moves to a global voting process to pinpoint the most consistent and likely correct answer. This layered approach to reasoning through possibilities is what makes this method stand out and why it performs so remarkably well on a benchmark where AI models have traditionally stumbled. The researchers didn't stop there. They validated their predictions using a self-consistency approach. This means the model cross-checks its answers across all the transformed inputs, ensuring the final choice is the one that appears most frequently. Essentially, it's a search for agreement, a built-in sanity check to ensure consistency in its reasoning. But here's the big question. What were the results? Well, hold on to your hats because this is where it gets wild. The, the study achieved a 61.9% validation accuracy, matching the average human score on the ARC benchmark. This is state-of-the-art performance and has sparked some serious chatter. Some are even claiming we're witnessing the slow emergence of AGI. Cue the frog in boiling water analogy. If you toss a frog into boiling water, it'll leap out immediately. But if the water heats up gradually, the frog won't notice until it's too late. The argument? We're the frog, and AGI is the water that's quietly but steadily reaching a boil. What's even more fascinating is that these results suggest that symbolic search isn't the only path to enhanced abstract reasoning in AI. This breakthrough opens the door to alternative methods for tackling one of AI's hardest challenges. Here's what's mind-blowing about this, folks. This research has hit state-of-the-art performance, matching human-level scores on a benchmark specifically designed to test whether we're approaching AGI. That's unprecedented territory. Of course, some might argue that a test like this doesn't definitively determine whether we've reached AGI. Um, for instance, OpenAI defines AGI as an autonomous system that outperforms humans at most economically valuable tasks. Um, by that definition, we're not quite there yet. But let's not downplay the significance here. Even if we're just applying these methods to improve abstract reasoning, the ripple effect could be huge. These advances can make AI systems significantly more accurate and, eventually, more effective in solving real-world problems. What's truly fascinating is that this research hints at a clear path toward AGI. When we connect the dots, a lot of what we've seen recently starts to click into place. For example, many of you are probably familiar with the O1 paradigm popularized by OpenAI. This new approach in the paper resembles that O1 model, 
because it also uses search during inference time to refine predictions. Here's the wild part. We don't really know exactly what OpenAI's O1 models are doing during inference. Their reasoning tokens are intentionally hidden to maintain their competitive edge. But what we do know is this. As test time compute increases, essentially giving the model more time to think, its ability to score higher on benchmarks and reason more effectively also increases. That's precisely what this paper demonstrates. It achieved a six-fold improvement using only an 8 billion percent improvement on its own. This is a massive leap forward, especially considering how small the model is compared to the giants we often hear about. But here's where it gets even crazier. This O1 paradigm is shedding light on patterns we've seen in AI before. Remember AlphaGo? Just a year ago, the creators of AlphaGo made predictions about the trajectory of large language models and their potential future. Turns out, much of what they hinted at is starting to play out right in front of us. I, I, th I think that's on the right track. I think there's a, these foundation models are world models of a kind. And to do really creative um, problem solving, you need to start searching. So if I think about something like AlphaGo and the Move 37, the famous Move 37, where did that come from? Did that come from all its data that it's seen of human games or something like that? No, it didn't. It came from it identifying a move as being quite unlikely, but you know, possible. And then via a process of search, coming to understand that the that was actually a very, very good move. So you need to, you, to get real creativity, you need to search through spaces of possibilities and find these sort of hidden gems. That's what creativity is. I think current language models, they don't really do that kind of a thing. They really are mimicking the data. They are mimicking all the human ingenuity and everything which they have seen from all this data that's coming from the internet that's originally derived from humans. If you want a system that can go be re truly beyond that and not just generalize in novel ways, so it can, you know, these models can blend things. They can do, you know, Harry Potter in the style of a Kanye West rap or something, yeah. even though it's never happened. They can blend things together. Right. But to do something that's truly creative that, that is not just a blending of existing things, that requires searching through a space of possibilities and finding these hidden gems that, that, are, that are sort of the hidden away in there somewhere. And that requires search. So I don't think we'll see systems that truly step beyond their training data until we have powerful search in the process. Part three. And that's exactly what we're witnessing with the O1 paradigm. And now, with the remarkable findings in the surprising effectiveness of test time training for abstract reasoning. This benchmark, historically a brick wall for LLMs, is being conquered with these innovative search-based methods and techniques, pushing the bar even higher. But here's the kicker. It's not just Shane Legg from Google DeepMind highlighting these breakthroughs. Insights are also coming from those directly involved with the O1 model. One fascinating example involves a game called Hanabi, where researchers saw a jaw-dropping performance leap they could barely believe. The secret? You guessed it. Search techniques. These parallels underline the game-changing potential of search-driven methods for reasoning and problem-solving. We're seeing patterns emerge that could reshape how we think about benchmarks, performance, and the future of AGI. This is what you would get by adding this search algorithm to the different bots. So if you take this handcrafted heuristic bot that was only getting 28% and then added the simplest search imaginable where you just like, you know, do a bunch of rollouts for all the different actions you, you could take and then pick the one that had the highest expected value, that would boost your performance to nearly 60%, which was beating all the previous deep RL bots just out of the box. This was using like a single CPU core at test time uh, for like a second. And the beautiful thing was that you could actually add this on top of all the other deep RL bots. So if you added it to like the latest and greatest bot, uh, deep RL bot, you would boost the performance even further to uh, around 72%. And then if you did this, this was only if you did search for a single player. So if you did it for both players, that's the green bars, and you can see the performance went up even more. Um, now I should also point out that the point, uh, the, the upper bound for this game is not 100% because there are some, ver there are some like 
deal outs that you just cannot win. So really the top performance is possible is like, I think uh, maybe 90%. Um, and so you can see like we're, we're quickly saturating um, performance in this domain. Now, when my teammates and I at FAIR um, got this result, my, my teammate literally thought it was a bug because it was just unimaginable that you do this like simple thing and the performance jumps up from like 28% to state of the art 58%. This is why we're witnessing a clear shift toward leveraging both test time and train time compute to supercharge large language models and AI systems. The mechanisms these systems use for searching might vary. There's a fascinating variety in how they explore possibilities. But one thing's certain, the future of AI is leaning heavily on advanced search techniques to unlock higher order reasoning and handle out of distribution challenges like never before. Here's the mind blowing part. Search itself is already a game changer, but it raises an intriguing question. How do AI systems stack up against humans in terms of efficiency? Sure, an AI can search through thousands or even tens of thousands of possibilities at lightning speed, but imagine if that search process became even more sample efficient. This brings me back to what Demis Asabas has said, something that really resonates here. Yes, we can build AI systems that surpass human performance in raw computational power. But when it comes to the finesse of efficiency, humans still hold the edge. And that's where things get really interesting. Would maybe look at millions of uh, possible moves for every decision it's going to make. Alpha Zero uh, and Alpha Go made, you know, looked at around ten, tens of thousands of um, possible positions in order to make a decision about what to move next. But a human grandmaster, a human world champion, uh, probably only looks at a few hundreds of moves, even the top ones, in order to make their very uh, good decision about what to play next. So that suggests that. Obviously, the brute force systems don't have any real model other than the heuristics about the game. Uh, Alpha Zero has quite a decent uh, uh, model, but the world, but the human, you know, human top human players have a much richer, much more accurate model than of Go or chess. So that allows them to make you know world class decisions on a very small amount of search. So I think there's still there's a sort of trade off there. Like you know, if you improve the models, then I think your search can be more efficient, and therefore you can get further with your search. When you start to unpack this, it all begins to click. These AI systems aren't just running blind calculations. They're creatively searching through vast possibilities, fine-tuning their outputs with techniques like adjusting temperature settings. This injects a level of variety into their solutions, increasing the chances of hitting the right answer more often. What's fascinating is that these thought patterns, those pathways, leading to correct answers, are then trained into the system. This could be why Sam Altman recently said something that truly stood out to me. This is the first time ever where I felt like we actually know what to do. Think about OpenAI's O1 model as a case in point. In their blog post, they detailed how allowing 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 submissions per problem led to a staggering score of 362.14, well above the gold medal threshold at the International Olympiad in Informatics. That's an extraordinary achievement for any LM. It's proof that by incorporating smarter search methods and increasing attempts, these models are breaking through barriers once thought impossible. It's, it's becoming clear that OpenAI might genuinely have a roadmap to AGI, and this roadmap likely combines multiple search techniques uh, with increasingly efficient processes. Uh, the potential of the O2 model is just as exciting. Sam Altman predicts it could score 105% uh, on the GPQA benchmark and even saturate other industry standards. What's more intriguing is that other companies' research seems to back these claims. The O1 not O2 paradigm might not be hype after all. It could be the framework for unlocking AGI. But here's the big question. Have we already reached AGI in terms of out of distribution reasoning? It's an exciting time and I can't wait to see how this all unfolds. Share your thoughts below and as always, thanks for tuning in.
See you in the next one.